Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Well, I needed a battery for my old 12 volt system, so I've been kind of watching for something decent, cheap. <laughs> so I ordered this one. Uh, my own money, it's not one that they sent me to check, so I'm going to do. I'm going to check it out. I guess you could call it a review, but you know, I don't get anything for it other than. I'm going to check this battery out and see if it's any good. And maybe help you guys out decide whether you want one. So, let's get her opened up and look. Got it on Amazon. I think it was uh, $169. It's supposed to have a Bluetooth app. So, thought I'd take a chance. Well, it's got a little different packaging than the other ones, but looks plenty adequate. And looks like I opened it upside down. <laughs> so it's in the box upside down. So this is what we got. It's a Murphypo? Oh, I don't know. However you say it. M E H R P O W. 12 volt, 100 amp per hour, lithium iron phosphate. It's not a 12.8, this is a 12 volt. So, oh. yeah, it's got a QC pass here. That's good. And on the box, it had QC pass of May 20, May 16th of 24. So, should be fairly fresh. And let's see, what do we got here? Oh, this is for the Bluetooth part, apparently. I never had one with Bluetooth, so. We'll see how we make out. I usually don't get along with that kind of stuff. And we got a brochure here. Well, looks like it's got reasonable information. I don't know if you guys can enlarge that enough to read it or not if you want. Let's see real quick. Uh, Peak current 200 amps for 3 seconds, discharge cutoff 10 volts, discharge temperature minus 20 to 60 centigrade, uh, water dust resistant IP55, uh, terminals are M8, you can put 8 in parallel and 4 in series. Uh, here it says 12.8 volts, 100 amp per hour. Minimum is 98 point or 98 amp per hours, 1280 watt hours. Uh, standard charge current 2C, maximum charge current uh, 0.5C, maximum continuous current 1C. And on the thing where I ordered it, it said it had low temperature protection, but I don't see charge temperatures, zero to minus 40, no, zero to 45C, 32 to 113, it doesn't say anything on here that I've seen so far. If I see where it says, but we're going to check it and see. I might even open this one up and take a look see inside. So, the bolts are already in it, and they're, they're brass bolts. And there is no uh, lock washers or anything. So that's, that's the bolt. Pretty short. 
So, grab a meter, see what she comes charged with. Yeah, you see that, okay. Thirteen point one nine. Well, that's good. That's right where you want it to be, I guess. So I'll stick these back in there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna charge her up. I'm gonna use this uh, better twenty amp charger. And we'll let it do its thing. And when it's done, we'll come back and do a capacity test on it. There we go, she's charging. Let me go get an amp meter and we'll see how much it's charging. No, it's not charging. Why isn't it charging? I thought Blinky would charge. I don't use this real often. Charging mode red on. That's not a good sign that it's not charging. Not a not too intelligent when you hook it up backwards. <laughs> oh my. Did it right on camera too. I'm not gonna redo it. You know, we all do stupid things. <clears throat> Set the charger. That quit blinking. There we go. <laughs> so we know this thing is not going to damage anything. All right, let's see what's the charger now. Nineteen point six amps. So I'll bring you guys back on when uh, it's fully charged. We'll uh, do a, uh, yeah, we could hook the little power supply up and see when it disconnects for high voltage disconnect. So maybe we'll do that and then we'll do a discharge test. Well, it's been <clears throat> a little over two hours and I come back to check on it. We're up to 14.3. Let's see what we're charging current wise. Uh, we're down to 9.6 amps according to the clamp here. So in preparation for the uh, load test, capacity test, I hooked these things up. So uh, let's see, we're at 14.32 volts. Um, we're charging 9 amps, it's going down. Put in 38 amper hours. Of course, it had charged some before that, so I would say it was probably about half full. So we should be coming on home stretch here pretty quick. So 14.33 and rising. Well, we're up to 14. Point, oops. 14.45 volts we're still charging 3.8 amps which I think is a good thing so the cells must be reasonably close voltage wise so we'll see how she goes okay we're at 14.5 volts now 
Charging still at 1.6 amps. So it's looking like them cells must be pretty even to keep going down <coughs> this low and keep going nice and steady like that. At least that's my opinion. I'm no no expert, but it just seems to me that that's a good thing. The charger just shut off 14.5. And it was down to like 1.2 amps. So, I'll throw my power supply on it and see if we can get the BMS to shut it down. Okay, I got my 2000 watt inverter hooked up. Uh, I can't say the name of it. I, I did a review on it. Uh, it's MFUZOP. Um, really nice inverter I'll uh, put a link to the video where I check this out down in the description and I've got my battery monitor set up here and I set it for 105 amper hours so if we get our 100 amper hours or more we'll be able to tell so I got the battery charger hooked up over there by way of an extension cord and we're going to fire her up. <clears throat> the fans come on at, at first uh, just as a test. So, since we got four. 14, 18 amps, 19 amps, so 19.7 amps, let me go see what the charger is doing over here, Okay, so we got 39 amps on the DC side. And we got uh, let's see, 489 watts on the AC side. So we're going to leave her go like that. That's almost twice what they rated at, but hey, who uses their battery for the exact rating, you know? So, let's see how long she goes. Okay, here's my charger that I'm charging my, uh, those two Chins batteries, 24 volts. So 26.9, 15.6 amps, put in 4.4 amps per hour. So that's where the juice is going from the other battery back into here because that's where it came from. We're about an hour into it. Um, let's see, 40 amps approximately. So we should have 40 amp per hour gone. We had 105 to start with, so we should be about 65. And yeah, that's 65.8. So, now we're into it. We're still going strong. Nothing's warm. The fans have never come on this, as far as I know. I've been doing other stuff around here. It's nothing warm at all. So it's easier number two cable, so. And this is the uh, voltage and the wattage going back and forth. <clears throat> uh, 
course that's inside the inverter so it's going to be a little low the battery voltage according to this is 12.9 This is 493. So we'll check back a little later. Well, we're a couple hours into it. We're down to, it says 24 amper hours left, but we set it for 105, so we've used about 80 amper hours so far. So it shouldn't take. Too long now. Well, it looks like we got a helper there. Miss Kitty. Nip, nip nosy kitty. So, see you in a bit. Well, we're coming in home stretch. This gets down to 5.000. We've got our 100 amper hours out because I set it to 105. And we're still, uh, what, 12.46 volts. Uh, we're drawing 21.5. Amps. Uh, down to 5.1%, which isn't accurate because I set it for 105. <clears throat> so, looks like we're going to make it easily because we're still at over 12 volts. My cat got shut in the building overnight where I keep my tractors and stuff. And she's being awful friendly because I went and let her out. <laughs> and there we go. We made our 100 amp hours. So anything we get now is a plus. So we'll see how long she'll go. It's been uh, a little over two and a half hours. Okay, we're coming up on 102 amp hours and she's still going. Um, we've got 12.32 volts yet. We're still drawing 21, 22 amps. So, keep going. Nothing's complaining yet. Now we made it to 103 amp per hour, so we're still going. Always does it 12.15. Still drawing 22 amps. We'll keep going. And we made it to 104. Molding just dropping. Where the fuck? No, I think inverted. Let's see, the battery's at 11.92 yet. Still drawing 22, almost 23 amps. Inverter's not complaining yet. If we make it to zero, it'll be 105 amp hours. I can't believe it. My some of my so-called brand name ones haven't done this good. And this is a cheapy oddball one. I'm amazed. Well, if we pop the top off and it looks quality inside, then I'd say we got a good the battery here. Which is what we'll do next. <clears throat> I think it would be a good time to do it when it's run down in case something goes wrong. Oh. 
Well, I've got to say, this is the best battery I've had, and it's the cheapest battery I've had. Gonna be no problem making it to 105 and it's gonna keep going. This won't be able to tell what because I think it just goes to zero because it won't count backwards. But there probably isn't any point in going any further when we get that far. So the thing has performed excellent. There we go, 105 and a half per hour, and it's still going. Zero <clears throat> percent. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut her down. We'll tear this down, and we'll take the top off and see what's inside. Well, I got the top started off. Looks like there's just some little catches every once in a while, I guess, and some kind of glue on them. There's what we got. <clears throat> so, let's see. We got silicone wire. Says. A W M one A two hundred C silicone rubber seven. There it is, seven A W G. So it's got a number seven. <coughs> um, BMS looks like it's just held on this uh, fiber board with goop. And it says on there, um, most of it's in Chinese, DP04S007-S version 1.7. Then there's a, a 4, and then there's a 100 A, 100 Amp. UART. And then there's a 16930036. And there's a MAC address, so that must be for the Bluetooth part. <laughs> so, looks like we got. Well, yeah. get that glue pulled loose, maybe. Oh boy. Okay, there's one labeled NTC, so I assume that's a temperature control. And it goes to a little wire which goes down inside there somewhere. So, let me see if I can get a little, a little better shot at this, if I can get some of this broke loose and we can get it out of there. Well, I've had the uh, battery in the freezer, and it's at uh, minus 2.7 centigrade, or 27.3 uh, Fahrenheit, so we're going to see if it'll take a charge. I got my bench supply up here 
you can see. So I'm going to touch it on there. And it's taking a charge. And I think the issue is if I go to parameters and I go to temperature settings charging low temperature protection is set for minus 10 it's too late at minus 10 it needs to be at zero and I don't see any way to change it nothing I touch or nowhere in this app can I find a spot to uh, change it you go to control and there's nothing there <clears throat> and uh, you know this information is there but uh, no way to change it so there's a gonna look for a different app see if I can find one where you can actually get in there and change things so if that's the case you know that might as well not have it because it's already too late if you're charging at that low temperature I think I got it so we can see a little better what's going on down in there you can see there's pouch cells and you can see there's goop in the bottom and I would say it's probably at least an inch deep that they're embedded in and you can see the pouch cells and you can see bus bars on the end here um, and this is the business end where the cables connect And these must be the balance wires. And then I think this black one is a temperature probe. Or is it? No, it isn't. Temperature probe's just right there in the case. It's not on the cells. So it's just going by the ambient temperature, not the actual cell temperature. I thought maybe that was a bulge, but I think it's just the stuff they got wrapped around them. So, I got one of these things here that we can look maybe a little better. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's see, turn the light on. I don't know if I can hold this so you can see and I can run that. But you can kind of see those pouch cells have, uh, now it's like a ribbon coming out of them. You can see they got it sandwiched in between two aluminum bus bars and then same thing at this end they're heavier on the business end here I'm trying to get <laughs> trying to watch two things at once and I'm not doing very well that's the negative connection positive connections over there some place. But these bus bars are heavier on this end. Alright, let's quit that thing. So, I discovered that these are actually 107 amper hours. So, their advertised capacity is actually less than the actual. It's nice they give you some headroom. Um, and once I got the app working, um, and I'll show you a little more about that 
later. Uh, I discovered that the temperature settings were uh, not at zero for the cold temperature cutoff. And I did put it in the freezer and I had it below freezing and it charged. So I finally found a uh, BMS app where I could go in and change the setting. So I changed those settings. Now I haven't tested that yet. So I'm going to do that before this video is over. So, nah, I guess maybe you could do that now. I can put it back in and get her cooled down and we'll see if the charge low temperature disconnect works. Here's my real scientific test. The battery's in the freezer. Got a power supply on top hooked up to it. And this is the <clears throat> the app, um, or the one I'm using anyways. And you can see there's no current. I'll turn this power supply on. And you can see we're charging. Okay. And if we go down here, you can see the temperature. <clears throat> and it's still 1.5 and I, I'm really surprised that this Bluetooth thing works with the freezer being closed up but you can see the temperature is going down <coughs> and uh, there's the cell voltages ah, so Got power. Must be the average voltage of the cells. The high voltage and the low voltage. And you got a cycle counter and the differential. And if you go here, you get to see parameters. And if we go to temperature settings. You can see where I changed it here. Charging low temperature protection zero and recovery is two degrees. That's what I that's the only thing I changed. Um, and you've got all these things you can choose and, and see. Um, there's all the protection numbers. So, you know, you got basic, basic information. Okay, we're getting close to zero. So we'll let her get a few degrees below, and then we'll try seeing if it'll take a charge. Okay, we're at minus one. So let's go up here and we'll watch this. Okay. I'm going to turn on the power supply. Nope, she's not charging. Alright. So that solved that problem. <clears throat> okay, we'll get her back out of here and. Uh, We'll get her charged all the way up, and we'll do the uh, 100 amp test, see how she does there. Just in case some of you wanted to know, I use the Overkill BMS things, and you use this uh, settings, and you can go in and change that temperature setting. In case anybody wanted to know. The battery's still in the freezer. I got the top off the battery. I'm going to reach in there with my finger and warm that back up. Yep, two degrees. She came back on, it's charging. Okay, let's do this uh, 
Let our amp test let her run for a little bit. Start up the inverter. If I got an electric heater I will start out with. Let that fan do its cycling. Oh, you guys see that? Ooh, throwing away. Yeah, I think you can see it now. It's around 1.6 inch. Yeah, so there's fan. Lamps, low setting. There's 50 amps. Let's see, where's the time? I'm going to about 20 after 11, 20, 21, 22 after. And yeah, we're up on high. That's 130 amps. That's close enough to 100. Let's see how she does. But I've still got the top off the battery. Thought it might be nice to see if anything's getting warm here. <coughs> So you guys can see it a little better. There. 104 amps. So uh, the voltage is check in about five minutes and see where we're at. We got, we got an app we can look at. So this is 106 amps. 12.82, uh, 1362 watts. Average voltage for cells is 3.2. Each one of the cells. And when I was charging, the balancer was on, and there was no protections activated. Now, so I'll be back in like four minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. We're still at uh, 12.82 volts, 106 amps. Average cells are 3.2. Temperature says 82.7 Fahrenheit. So I got one of these temperature things. That's an old thing. I should get a newer, more accurate one, but let's see what the EMS is doing temperature wise. There is some warmth to those cables. Let's do a minutes now or a little more. We're still at 106 amps, 12.8 volts. 
Everything's looking good. Doesn't seem to be a problem for it. Those wires are, I wouldn't call them hot, they're warm. Um, I got another little heater here. I'm going to turn on and see if we, how much we'll go over. See if it'll fit down. Yep, it's shut down. So, I guess it works like it's supposed to. I think it's 110 amps that the uh, parameters are set for. So, you know, it did good. I turned that heater off. I'd say about 30 seconds, it all come back on by itself. So, I'll get this all tore apart, put the top back on it, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here's my final thoughts for, for what they're worth. Um, I'm no expert, just my opinion, I guess you would say. So I bought it because it was cheap, and it said it had good specs. It was $169 on Amazon. I see it's back up to $200 and something. Um, Capacity-wise, it actually put out more than they advertised. It seems to hold voltage good and everything. Um, build quality... It's not bad. Um, the fact that BMS was just held in with some goo and the way it's mounted in there and the, the case is not waterproof or anything. It's only IP55. For what I'm going to use it for, it's going to sit in there on the shelf for my little 12 volt system and it'll be perfect. Now if this was going to be a rough house and stuff I'm not sure how well it would hold up as far as everything's staying in place. I think the battery fell because that goop in there is about that deep. The only complaint I have, main complaint I have, is that low temperature cutoff. Why do they... It's not protected if you don't set the parameters correctly. I mean, this could have been ruined because it wouldn't shut down. The battery would have been frozen and it still would have been charging. Um, I was just lucky that I seen that and was able to uh, remedy it. But other than that, for the price, I guess I'd give it a, a thumbs up. I mean, you know, what else can you get for that price? <laughs> You know, if you want to go uh, extreme, you can pay a lot more money, and I'm not sure if you get a lot more, but if it makes you feel good, that's fine. Another thing that I question, I'm questioning my viewers, it advertises automotive grade cells. Now, are these pouch cells considered automotive grade? I've never had any before, and you know, I can't say they're no good, and I can't say they're good, because I've never had any. Time will tell, and probably once in a while I'll fill everybody in on how this bugger's doing. So, I guess that's enough boring video from Papa Junk, so, you know, if you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up, and if you have comments, uh, leave them down below. And questions or comments and I like to read them and if I can answer a question I try to. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed please do so. And don't forget the, the thumbs up. See you next time.